today I'm going to talk about using magic threads for joining lace when you're joining something like this edging where you're joining the start the, or the finish into the start of the lace and it's particularly troublesome where you have a trail like this with passives or on the head side of a piece of lace where again you've got passives to sew into. It could also be on something like this motif where again you've worked around the motif and you've got to join the passives together. Once I've shown you the join I will also talk about the continental knot that's found in Bruges flower lace because this is a simple edging I'm setting up and it'll be easy to demonstrate that knot as well. For this video I've drawn a curved trail to simulate the end of a motif or it could be an edging or anything of this nature where you've got passives and a worker to join. So I'm going to start with putting the pins in at the halfway stage as if I'm starting this motif and I'm just going to hang the pairs in. This one's going to be the worker pair and then I'm going to hang in a number of pairs as passives and these are going to be hung at the back of the work on a temporary support pin and they're going to be hung side by side so that you have distinct loops in which to sew the pairs into and this is quite important because you want the passives to lie side by side to give these separate loops and I think we'll go for four pairs of passives for this size of trail just so that you can see what is happening. Now for magic threads we use a coloured thread different to the colour you're working with and what I tend to do is to keep all of my threads that I've cut off from coloured pieces just as a bundle and then when I want to colour thread just pull one out and you want a length about 60 centimetres in length. Take the two ends and fasten them together in an overhand knot so your thread is then double and then with it double place it under one of the bobbins to take to the back of the thread and this at this stage you have four threads together and you just put that the four threads lying side by side to the back of the pillow and you do this in turn for each of the pairs of bobbins that you've hung on and ideally use a different colour so that you can see when you get back round to them that they are different and you can see which one you're going to go to next. If you've only got two or three pairs, two or three colours then you can put them in a, a rainbow style so that you can actually go red, blue, green, yellow for instance and you can then work out which pair goes to which. If you do them like stripes rather, rather than a rainbow and just keep lying them to the back of the pillow. Each time you're taking a length of thread, it's not critical on the length but you don't want them to be too short and each time knotting them so they're in half, getting the next pair of bobbins and putting them under one of the pair and then just taking them to the back and they're lying in order at the back of the, the pillow. I'm probably going to run out of colours in a minute so I will then go back to the yellow. I think I've got four colours in this bundle. It doesn't really matter how many you've got as long as you haven't got the same colour as you're working with. That does make it more tricky. And if you've got different colours next to each other you can also find them easier once you've actually finished working. Uh, this is the next one going in. It just takes a little minute to do it but this makes the finishing off just very much so much easier. I don't 
think I've got another colour in here so I'll go back to the yellow which was the first one that I used. And sometimes these bundles get tangled but it doesn't take too much to pull the thread out. I've got a yellow one next. Again, overhand knot. It's just to keep the ends from pulling out. And then under the last pair of bobbins on the left hand side. So now all of my pairs have got one of these threads under the loop of the bobbin at the back here, including the worker. And I've tried to keep them nice and straight. Now if you are actually doing a big piece, this becomes more tricky. You may need to pin them down. You can put them under the cover cloth, but once you've started working, they will twist up together a little bit and you'll have to straighten them out at the end. So now I'm going to just start working as you would on the edge. And I'm just going to do a little bit of the trail so that I can show you what happens when you come back around. And if this was a book's point piece, obviously I'd be doing uh, picots, but for speed of the video, I'm just going to do it as a winky pin, two twists around the pin. Now once I've got two or three pins in, I'm going to let these workers, or the passives even, slide down. But to do this, I'm going to hold those threads and I'm going to lift that pin with it still on and allow it to lay flat on the pillow. This will maintain the loop that you've got over the pin and just give you that little bit of slack to do the join when it comes around to the finish. And these just then stay at the back of the pillow and that one does as well. And then you can see it's tensioned up quite nicely. Now you could let them go, but it would pull up quite a bit and make it much more difficult. So there I've actually pulled it down and tensioned it up. I think the first bit was off the camera, unfortunately. You may hear rain today, we have a, keep having showers and the sun keeps coming out so the lighting is going to keep changing on this finished video. Just a memento of the British weather today. Now you'd be working all the way around this edging or the motif until you come back round to do the join. And I'll just do a few pins and then I'll do the rest off camera until I get round to the other side. As I say, this could be passives on a head side, a foot side. Now some people do put magic threads in around every single pair as the starter motif. And this does lead to a lot of magic threads on your pillow. You can do this if you have great difficulty, but where pairs are around a pin, such as a, a stitch, a honeycomb stitch, you have a much more distinct hole in which to sew into. So generally, unless you do really struggle with either your hands, maybe your sight isn't as good as it used to be, then you don't generally need to do that. But if you are struggling, by all means use this, this method to make life easier. There's no point in struggling in a hobby, a pastime that is supposed to be enjoyable. Use whatever method suits you to do the finish. And I'll come back to you shortly when I've got round to the other side and started the join. 
I've now worked the little bit of trail that would be the start of the piece of lace and the little bit of trail coming up to the join and I've just got a few pinholes left to work here now. This is now getting in the way, obviously you can see I've had to push the threads out of the way and I also need to push these pins down to get them out of the way. If you were actually doing this as a piece you may have removed some of the pins but always leave the few at the start of it so that when you come to do the sewing in the joining it doesn't distort it. But you can now push these right down into the pillow. That one probably is not going to sit quite close enough but it will do for now. And again just pull the threads under the cover cloth out of the way. And as you can see now they're all mingling up and this is one of the reasons for actually using the different coloured threads. I'm now just going to continue the last few pinholes. Because I've pushed those down you can actually push a, a pull a cover cloth over them as well so that your threads don't catch the pins. But for the purposes of the video I'm going to leave them uncovered so you can see what is happening. And just work right down. You, don't, you would have worked all of the inside of this motif for edging as well down to this point for the join. Take just last few pins to go and then we can do the join. Now this join always takes a little bit more time than you expect, so don't do it when it's last minute trying to rush a piece of lace to get it finished, because taking time on the finish makes all the difference. The wind's now just getting up, so apologies for the sound noise in the background. It always happens when I decide to do a video, we get heavy rain and I'm sat filming this out in the conservatory the best light without having artificial light on which creates the shadows it's like the the weather is against me at the moment I do try and keep a few videos ahead but it doesn't always work with the weather and other outside elements affecting my videoing If you think of something else while I'm just finishing this off that you'd like to see being video, please let me know. This video came out of somebody's comment a few days ago wanting to know what magic threads were and how they were used. There's another technique um, by a, a German lace teacher, Martina, that uses similar sort of uh, techniques but for invisible joining and I thoroughly recommend checking out her techniques if you want to make even more invisible joins on your lace. She uses threads, supplementary threads in a similar way but calls them lazy loops and pulls the threads back into the lace as a brief synopsis of how it's done but well worth learning the techniques. Okay so I've got to the last, um, last pin now my worker started on the inside edge so I'm just going to take that back through so I join the worker with the start worker loop. Now at this point I can take that pin out that's laying flat on the pin on the pillow, laying horizontally and this will give me a little bit more space in the join to actually be able to loop them through. And because I've taken it at those, that pin out, I can now push these two back down in the pillow a bit further. And now I pull the lazy, uh, the magic threads to the top of the cover cloth. And as you can see, they're all jumbled up a little bit now, and I do need to straighten them out without pulling them out. I know the edge one was a yellow one, so I can separate that one out. And I know the yellow one was over here. So again, just separate them out, try and get all four threads so you don't pull them out the loops. And do it gently and take your time again. That's the orange one. 
Okay, you can now see that I'm separating them out. So that's the yellow one to go over there. I can't remember what the next one was, but it does look like it's the blue one. Unless you write the sequence down, you're not likely to remember it when you've finished a piece of lace after weeks or months. But you can see when you separate them out which one goes next to which. So I just tend to separate them out and put them like this to the side of the pillow and decide which way you're going to work first. And I'm going to work from the right because that's where my worker is. So I now have them all separated out and I can see where's, what's going where. So as I said I'm going to start with the worker pair. I get the thread now it has become a little bit twisted so I'll untwist that to start off with. And you just put the pin in and separate it and untwist it and make sure the thread is running smoothly and freely through that loop and it's not caught around a pin. I'm now going to lengthen these threads a little bit on the bobbins not too much but just a little bit and I'm going to put one of the bobbins through the loop end not the knotted end of the lazy the magic threads now I've talked about lazy loops I keep talking about them instead of magic threads so I've put the bobbin through the loop and then pull on the knotted end leaving the bobbin loose and it's caught around that pin And this pulls up the thread of the bobbin. You then have to cut the knot off the end in order to pull the thread out from the bobbin thread. Now you can either cut it off completely or I sometimes just do cut the end like that so that it can pull out. Hold on to your thread of your bobbin. The second bobbin goes through this loop. And pulls up. Now I would normally if I was just doing this as a knotted finish I would then do a reef knot which is right bobbin over left and then left over right but I'm going to show you the running knot that's used in continental lace so I'm not going to knot these at this stage. I then take the next thread check that it is in line and get the next pair of bobbins. Make sure you're not twisting them round. So I'm going to take that over the top because that's the position it wants to be in. So you can see that's going to join up with that one there. Again, sort out your thread. Make sure there's no twists on it. If you get twists on it, it can knot when you pull it through. Lengthen it slightly, put one bobbin through, keep it loose and just pull it up. You've got the loop through from the bobbin, snip the magic thread, which I've just snipped off camera. Hold that loop now if you're in the middle of this and the doorbell goes, you can put a pin through it and park it to the side so that it doesn't actually go anywhere while you're answering the door or the phone. I do appreciate sometimes emergencies happen, but try and do it in one go where you don't get the distractions. Now this has just twisted up a little bit, so again, make sure you want to take the twists off before you put the loop through. Pull the bobbin through the loop and pull it up. And you can see now that is forming quite a nice join. So I continue across the row. Now was it this one? Yes, this is the next one. So we'll get the next pair to come in. Lengthen them slightly. Take the twists off. They do get twisted, don't worry about it. 
as I say it just takes a little time put the bobbin through the loop keep that bobbin loose and pull it up and you always get one that doesn't run quite as nicely if you need to pull it to the back of the pillow and the front just to get it through there shouldn't be too many problems if you've actually um, left the pin in. Sometimes it's tighter if you haven't, which is why I always recommend leaving that pin in flat on the pillow to hold the loops to give you that little bit of slack to sew them through. This is particularly important if you're using thicker thread, although it's important with fine thread because that's more easily to snap. And the last two we know the yellow one's on the edge, something's twisted around here. This one looks as though it's had a party while I've not been looking, and that's in a very short space of time. Though, as you can imagine, it can get worse. That's it. I've straightened it out. You have to tell it exactly what you want it to do. So the loop end again, bobbing through, keep it loose and pull it up. Blue and the yellow ones seem to have had a party. The last one to do, the yellow one. I just keep pulling them up a little bit so you've got them on camera, you don't need to do that. Just stops them twisting a little bit. Bobbing through, doesn't matter which one, they both work through the same. Although you do have to take care if you're wanting twists on a join as to which bobbin you need to put through. Make sure you take the one from underneath rather than the one on top. This one I'm just wanting a straight join without twists so it is less noticeable. And as I say one will always do a bit of a knot. That's pulled it up. Just put a pin in and pull it. So that is all of the joins done and now it just needs knotting. And I'm going to show you the continuous uh, Belgian knot, the Bruges flower lace knot that's taught to join across the trail. It's a useful knot and while it's traditional in Belgian lace I have used it in other laces as well where I want a very secure knot across the trail. So we start at one side I'm starting on the right, so I take the right bobbin and I do the first half of the reef knot, the right over left, and pull it up. I then put the left bobbin underneath that first right hand uh, bobbin and pick the next bobbin up and do a right hand over left and pull it up and put it underneath. And each time I'm taking one more bobbin, doing the right over left and putting it underneath the bobbin left in my right hand. And I go all the way across this row doing this right over left. And it's a continuous knot, it gives you a, a really nice, neat, but very secure seam. I'm 
and then when you get to the left hand side you just tension it up a little and then you're going to do the opposite to go back so you go left over right so the left bobbin over the top and through the loop and put that down underneath the left hand one This knot's quite difficult to show in a book how it's actually done. You can describe it but not everyone can learn from a book with the written words. And you're nearly at the end now, all the way across. And belt and braces right over left again just on the last one and then you've got a nice little join I'll zoom in in a moment which I've just tensioned it up and this can be trimmed very very close to the lace and then just to finish trim it off very very close I hope that's been helpful. If you've enjoyed watching it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to hear of more videos coming soon, and let me know if there's anything you particularly want to see. Thanks for watching.